Hello everyone and welcome to another ride overview. Today we're going to talk about one of the most overpowered coaster types in the game. The air powered vertical coaster. This is one of those coaster types that is purely there to look intimidating and be incredibly fast and intense. With a maximum launch speed of 180 km per hour it has the fastest launch in the entire game. This makes sense as it uses a compressed air launch system which is also the fastest in the real world. Dododonpa in Japan which also uses compressed air holds the world record for the fastest acceleration with a launch from 0 to 180 km per hour in just 1.6 seconds. The air powered vertical coaster is good for one thing and one thing only and that is a stupidly high ticket price. For example, this pre-built design in the Grand Canyon scenario has a maximum ticket price of 30 euros and 20 cents. You can't actually charge more than 20 without plugins, but this means you can keep charging that 20 for a very long time. Only once the ride becomes more than 5 years old or when you build another air powered vertical coaster can you charge less than 20 euros. This crazy high ticket price is offset a little bit by a lower maximum throughput. Because this coaster type is always launched, you can only have one train, so the longer the ride, the lower the throughput. This particular design can handle about 2200 guests per hour, which is quite a bit less than a standard looping or wooden coaster that has multiple trains. If you remove the brakes, the ride time shortens and the maximum throughput increases to about 2600 guests per hour. This is one of my tips, never include any brakes on this ride, unless you're going so fast that you need them to avoid excessive lateral g-forces in banked turns. Brakes only lower the throughput and since you only have one train you don't need to worry about two trains colliding if the station brakes fail. With the high ticket price and short ride time the air powered coaster is great at making guests become broke as fast as possible. They pay a lot per ride and are able to ride a lot of rides in a certain time span. This comes at a cost though, literally, as the air powered coaster is the most expensive coaster type in the game, along with the reverse freefall coaster. The cost of the looping coaster is about average and its station piece costs 68 euros. The giga coaster is quite expensive and costs 90 euros per station piece. The air powered coaster completely destroys that at 150 euros per station piece with the other track pieces being equally as expensive in comparison. Even this simple loop already costs more than 2500 euros which is truly absurd. There is an upside though as the air powered coaster has no support costs or even a support limit. You can build at 180 meters above the ground and a straight track piece will still only cost 100 euros. In general it's still a very expensive coaster, but it does mean that you don't have to care about how high up you built it. The reason I used a flat loop of track to compare its cost to the other ride types is that those are the only track pieces that they have in common. The only way that the air powered vertical coaster can go up and down is with large vertical spikes. The pieces at the bottom of the spikes are nice and smooth, but the top section is extremely small and produces a lot of negative vertical g-forces. Even when you crest the hill with a speed of only 4 km per hour you still get negative 2 vertical g's making it nearly impossible to not get red g-forces. You have to be careful with this as you can easily get very high g's which gives a lot of extra intensity. Speaking of intensity, the air powered coaster always has a lot of it which is a big reason for why the ticket price can be so high. On all other ride types the excitement rating contributes the most to the ticket price, but on the air powered coaster and reverse freefall coaster the intensity contributes the most. 
Not only that, but with a value of 66, their intensity contributes more than the excitement rating does on all other coaster types. If you're confused by all these numbers and what they do and how they work, watch my video on ride ticket prices for more info after this video. This high intensity rating does make the coaster rather one dimensional though. This design has the smallest hill that fulfills the stat requirement, crests that hill at a very low speed, has almost no lateral g-forces and still has over 7 intensity. Even if you deliberately fill its only stat requirement, which is a drop of 25 meters, your intensity rating doesn't get lowered. Obviously you don't get the intensity rating from the vertical G's and the drop, but unlike most other ride types, the intensity rating is unaffected by the stat penalty. The lowest possible intensity rating is just barely below 5, and this coaster is terrible with a 2 minute ride time. This means you cannot use the air powered coaster to appeal to guests who prefer less intense rides. You may also have noticed that the excitement rating on this design is only 1.7. This is because instead of having its excitement divided by 2, the air powered coaster gets its excitement divided by 4 when it fills its stat requirement. Until recently it was only 2 in OpenRCT2, but that bug has been fixed now. This means that the design I talked about in my video about the most overpowered coaster design is a little worse now, but it is also more accurate. Speaking of designs, it's that time of the video where we talk about efficient designs. As usual you can find a download link with all three designs in the description. The first one is the smallest and it's the one I made that video about. Usually I don't include designs that fail stat requirements, but this one is just too good to ignore. Because it has about 8 intensity and intensity contributes the most, you can still charge more than 14 euros in the first 5 months, even if you build multiple of these. The ride time is extremely short and as a result it can handle more than 4000 guests per hour if you set the minimum waiting time to zero, which is actually quite a lot. This is a great design to spam in your park as it drains the pockets of your guests significantly quicker than the micro corkscrew or micro looping. If you are in a pay for entry park and not pay for rides, this is not the greatest design, as that is where the soft guest cap matters the most. The air powered coaster attracts 70 guests to the park, which is less than many other coaster types, and it's also more expensive than many other micro coaster designs. The second design is the smallest one that does make the stat requirement. With a cost of almost 5,500 euros, it is the most expensive, smallest design of any coaster type. That's not for nothing though, as it also has by far the highest stats. With more than 8 excitement and almost 10 intensity, you can still charge the full 20 euros even if you have multiple of them. Not only that, even after the maximum ticket price lowers when the coaster turns 5 months old, you can still charge 19 euros. I prefer to set the launch speed to the highest you can without going over 10 intensity, as it allows you to charge more. This does cause almost minus 4 negative G's, but since the guests all have necks made of steel, this doesn't matter. A nice feature of this design is that you can put the station anywhere along the straight section, making it a bit more flexible. Because this design already has such incredibly high stats, you don't need a bigger pre-saved design, as that's only a waste of money. Of course, sometimes you will still build one with multiple hills and turns and all that good stuff, but those will be customly designed and appropriate to the situation. The last design is one that only works in OpenRCT2. By using the launch without passing station mode and building just one half of a spike, you can have a design that fulfills the stat requirement while being cheaper than the first design. 
The reason this doesn't work in vanilla or classic is that the air powered coaster needs to be a full circuit before you can open it, but that requirement was removed in OpenRCT2. With its small size and stats in between the other two, it's probably the best of the three, but it only works if you're using OpenRCT2, which most of you probably are though. And that was it for this ride overview. The air powered vertical coaster is one of the most overpowered ride types, but only in specific situations. Its lack of variety makes it not as interesting to build custom designs with, but I still really like the coaster type as a whole. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.